Hi, everybody. Welcome to the gym in Sam Town Square. I'm Scott King, joined as always by TV producer extraordinaire Chris Cangilla. Chris, how's it going? You know, it's it's going well. It's uh, it's in, we're in Chicago, so it's starting to warm up, but then we get storms, so it's it's just spring, right? It's we're doing fine. It starts to warm up, then we get a tornado and or snow. So it's sure. like you can't you can't ever just fully relax and put on your summer gear. But there was another great week of Jim and Sam. Lots to break down. You know, we have domesticated Jim. Is he really domesticated? Is there still a lot of old Jim in there? We'll break that down. We might have had some uh, Jan Terry. Might have, might be seeing some Edna Faust on the road with uh, with Jimmy. So a lot to get to. And uh, first, I think I want to start with domesticated Jim. So we yeah, absolutely have, go ahead. We have Jim's situation for you know people who haven't heard absolutely everything is living with a girlfriend for a while now, which is that's a lot different than things used to be. And his girlfriend, uh, I'm sure she's a, a lovely girl for Jim to make this commitment. But she sounds a little peculiar like Jim, which I think is hilarious. She watches The Nanny. And she's younger. She's watching Fran Dresser and The Nanny. She listens to Queen Latifah, as Jim pointed out, her uh, favorite song is the one that goes, U-N-I-T-Y. And she watches Westerns. So I think it's a, it seems like a very interesting relationship. But he's still himself. He just bought six pairs of the same boots. I think a couple were different colors, but... He's still spending and kind of doing impulsive things he used to do. You know, I got to stop you there. It's it's it cracks me up that he can't just buy one of something. He finds something he likes and he needs to buy all of it. Yes. And can you ship it home when there's a store that he could go walk to probably in New York City and, and get it? It, yeah. it just cracks me up. But I do like this little twist of Jim. He he wants to be domesticated. He wants to be a normal guy, but he still has these idiosyncrasies that are just makes him Jim, right? Yes. And one of those could be buying a thousand dollar mattress pad, which the guys didn't really give him a lot of grief about because they they kind of talk about those kind of things. You know, it's kind of worthwhile if it helps you sleep. But in in breaking down the issue where Jim's girlfriend pulls the sheets and he sometimes yells at her. Ah, (laughs) Yells at her. Give me that. What what are you doing? What? Hey. He, uh, they went into. I think Sam knew that Kevin Undergaro has this whole like concoction that he has in his bed with his lovely wife uh, Maria Menunos, where he wants to stay up, she needs to go to bed, so he has like PVC pipes and a whole thing where he can be on his computer. It sounds like. Well, you know, she's one of the most beautiful women in, in the world, so you know there has to be something about okay, it's time to sleep. You want to sleep? I want to work. You got to get along inside this whole thing. So it kind of led us to what Jim experienced. I think it was Wednesday night, and he told us about it today or the day before, about an opportunity he had to sleep alone. You want to share that story? Absolutely. Um, That was uh, Jim's uh, girlfriend. Correct me if I'm wrong. There was a a spray tan. Yeah, I think she got a spray tan, and um, they didn't have the proper sheets uh, if she has that spray tan and she goes into their main, you know, bedroom and their bed together, um, it may lead onto the sheets and ruin their four million count sheets that they just got. So, yeah. um, in in uh, in a way of trying to sub, you know, go around that aspect, they uh, decided that maybe she should sleep in the office in the beautiful pull out uh, uh, bed in uh, for their sofa there and. Uh, so that's what they did. So Jim went in and tucked her tucked her in and brought her the uh, stuffed animal to kiss and to stay there. And guess what? He left with that stuffed animal because she said, you know, he would he needs to sleep with you. So unfortunately, Jim did have to sleep with the stuffed animal, but he was able to get some good night's rest in his own bed. So single bed, Jimmy. Before he did that, he said he did say that he turned over the stuffed animal and, and went back to some old habits um, that he takes up when he's by himself so of course. Uh, good for him good on him with that and yes. I, I didn't i didn't know all this about spray tans like you need like i would just assume that they can go on any sheets like it could stain any sheet yeah i think if you so. get if it's pretty fresh it can rub off on your clothing yeah. or or your your uh, sheets and stuff so so she's with the lesser sheets. you can see us you know we're chicago guys we, we're not getting any kind <laughs> not of, a lot of spray tan. regular sand or uh, spray tan that's for sure so more with the apartment, Jimmy's apartment woes continue. First, we had a, a big water leak um, pretty recently, and now 
he's dealing with um, some electricity issues. When he turns on their shades or their electric shades, it shorts out his electricity. He thought it was a TV issue. So his electricity is going out now also when he uses his shades. It's so funny. I think even a caller uh, did call in and say, you know, they lost power and then everything in their house goes on and randomly in the middle of the night. The shades were open or a yeah. light will switch on. That's enough to scare the, the Jesus out of you, right? I think so. Yeah. Speaking of Jim, I wonder how much that uh, the girlfriend is interacting with these characters. I want to show this fine shirt. That's just that I have. Love it's just delightful. I do, I do love that shirt. But yeah, it's 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 you know how could she not? I mean, that's what he does, right? Yeah. He just makes yeah. up the characters and keeps them going. You got to get used to Oscar, and and we've heard before, girlfriends of the past. There's probably twenty different characters that they're interacting with, so it's it's a it's a lot to to deal with. Which kind of leads, and and maybe you had this on uh, what you're thinking about yeah. going to next, but you know she's going to experience a lot of those characters over uh, the eight hour trip that they're taking to uh, to Cleveland, right? Absolutely, and you know I guess Jim Jim still does a lot of dates, but the way he's the way he's been describing this this week is this is a this is a big undertaking, and like you said, he's in the car for a long time with the girlfriend. I want to know who you think the uh, mystery videographer. Or is there Chris? Well, we, if it was if it was hot dog, dog, wouldn't they have said hot dog? So I wonder yeah, if he, yeah. he hired even someone bigger. But it, yeah. it has to be somebody he knows well because he I wouldn't imagine that he'd want to do 16 hours, eight there and eight back right. with this this person. So it, it's it's yeah. very interesting who it could be. And it sounded like it was someone that the guys on the show recognized. There seemed to be that kind of confirmation there. It, yeah. It could have been hot dog. I mean, they just didn't didn't allude to the fact maybe, that maybe this that is it a was. top secret hot dog mission. We don't know. You know, Sam's little man's. We we don't know if it's going to exactly. be exactly. So this trip is probably one of my favorite uh, subjects that they discussed yes. during the whole uh, whole week. I just thought, <laughs> why would he do this? Why would he want to drive? I know he has this thing of if it's under a certain amount of you know time for his trip, he wants to drive. Maybe this is part of domesticated Jimmy that he wants yeah. to be a real person and do a road trip. He, I guess he likes driving at times. He's done it a lot, but um, this trip leads him a, a, across uh, into uh, Cleveland, across some very uh, famous areas that we're familiar with on the show. You want to share those? Absolutely. Uh, none other than Shemokin, which had the Dunkin' Donuts fire where we met uh, a hall of fame segment on Jim and Sam, Edna Faust. And not coffee, only did we get to revisit that. Cold coffee. What do you call it? What do you call it? <laughs> Cold coffee. I guess they call it ice coffee. Yeah, that's a better uh, question. The legend. And not only did we get to hear more about that and hear, hear a lot more Jim riffs that I thought were fantastic that we hadn't heard before on Edna Faust, but the guys maybe for the first time ever changed their Twitter profile to Edna Faust in honor of the road trip. And what a what a beautiful woman she is for her to be on that profile pic. I, I haven't checked today. Is it still there? Do you know? Yeah, I checked earlier. That's great. Let's see it right now. All right. While you do that, I'll, I'll keep on going with part of this uh, trip that uh, that the guys, or not the guys, but Jim and, and his girlfriend and the mystery camera person or whoever that person is. Yeah. So, you know, Troy, uh, kind of from the area in Allen, Allentown. Is it Allentown, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in Pennsylvania that they're driving near and and of course where Edna is. Um, just giving Jim tips on where to go and and what to do and you need to stop here and all that kind of stuff. I don't think Jimmy will do any of those stops, but I, I in, inside me, I wish they, that he would because I just would love to hear his take on on those places, you know? I think so. Yeah, he said he's been in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame before. That's the thing, like, I guess I would understand, like, going this long and, and driving this far if it was, like, a destination, but, like, I've been to Cleveland and like there's just like at like I feel like at like two o'clock, like everything just shuts down. There's it's like a ghost town. And I thought the rock and you, you know, you're you're a musician. So interested in what you think. But I thought the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is pretty lackluster in terms of what you can see in there. You know, I haven't made it to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, I did go out there for a football game. Rock yeah. and Roll Hall, Hall of Fame at the nighttime was was closed down. I was there with my young son at the time. But I will tell you this. They also started talking about the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. I have been there, yeah. and that was very cool. But I, I love museums. Uh, Sam made the point of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Just go to Planet Hollywood, and you get the same kind of thing. But I, I, uh, I, I think it would I think it would be kind of cool and, uh, and to see all that stuff. But you have to have patience, I think, when you go to a museum. You have to really want to go and read 
the plaques as well as sees everything. And I'm not sure if Jim has that kind of patience. I know he went to some other museums when he went to, was it Amsterdam? Yes. And uh, some of those death museums, I think he liked, but I, I think he, uh, I think he's gotten all the rock and roll stuff that uh, he needs, which kind of talks about, you know, his need for more kiss stuff. Yes. Um, and making his own museum if he could in his right. apartment. Right. He's buying ads now, the chopper poster, an ad for the chopper poster. <laughs> not, not the chopper poster that he wants to get, but the $150 ad for the chopper poster. These are the jewels which... from the belt. Yes, exactly. Uh, I think if he can if he can have a good time and want to purchase a t-shirt at the Bobby Fisher Museum, he could probably he could probably have a good time going back to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, so, I would think for so. For sure. Absolutely. I would think so. And uh, you know, some of the things the guys talked about this week let's get to um you know i remember it being a big segment when the movie came out but that we revisited the many saints of newark again uh this week and it's it's that's funny how like did first of all did you see the movie chris i didn't see the movie yeah. you know um I, I love the sopranos i just watched the sopranos only once through um i didn't really even go back and, and do any rewatches which yeah. is not you know typical of me i do like doing a lot of rewatches but that's just one i didn't i didn't get through and get, didn't get to. And I know both Sam and Jim love it so much. I mean, Sam did a little uh, rewatch with, with Ian Finance or it was yeah. Ian's first time through, I think, or something yeah, like yeah, that. So the podcast, yeah. Yeah. They did the podcast on that. So I know it's close to them, but I still could enjoy this bit about, you know, this is so stupid. This, it, uh, it is. Yeah. How, how, so, what do you yeah. think? I, I think basically like, I kind of agree with all of them. <laughs> like when I, when I saw it, so I, I did a rewatch of the Sopranos and the two best shows for me that I ever rewatched, I did them both of my wife, so we enjoyed them together, were Herb, Herb Enthusiasm with Larry David, and The Sopranos. Sure. And just, you know, kind of a lot of episodes, great episodes, great rewatches. So I was I was looking forward to The Many Saints of Newark. And when I watched it, kind of like Travis and I think and Sam, that I like liked it at first. And then, you know, the the member berries kind of wear off and you know, all the things they shoehorn in there just for fans. And then you listen to Jim and just kind of crap on it. And and he's right about a lot of it. So I think it's worth seeing if you're a Sopranos fan. There's some good stuff in there. But there's I think that's Jim. Berries. I think that's Jim's favorite pastime is to ruin a movie oh, so after the at. fact. I mean, because Sam and, and everybody love Baby Driver so much. And they can't even they can't even deal with it because Jim pointed out some stupid things in there. And and it just gets stuck. Right. And yeah, so yeah. Uh, they uh, he has the innate ability to to ruin a movie after the fact. Right. Yes, and that's one of the classic O and A clips on uh, YouTube. Is you listen to him run face off for Patrice. Yeah, uh, yeah. Patrice O'Neill loved that movie, and Jim just took it away from him. He completely agreed with Jim by, by the time Jim was done talking about it on this segment. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, another thing I got to this week is too viral. I love, love when they break down viral videos, like these things that everyone are reacting to on the internet. And I these ones got me a little fired up. You might have felt the same way being a parent. Uh, they're both airplane videos about airplane etiquette. So uh, first video, they showed a, a uh, wife of a major league ball player who is pregnant and has two young kids with her. And one of the kids spilled popcorn all over. And apparently a flight attendant made her pick up the popcorn. There's a photo and she, she, her husband said tweeting to United, I think that she had to get down. They made her get down on her knees and, and pick it up. And you know, I understand what you have to say, but first thing I thought is like, we make messes everywhere all the time. Like I, like the, the youngest kid will make a mess. You're holding the other kid who might be kicking and screaming. And then the oldest one, you're just watching and trying to walk out. Like it's, it's not easy to go places with kids. Sometimes you leave a little mess and it's a restaurant. You, you tip a little extra. I think that it's okay. People should, the people are kind of given her grief and like, it's a kid, you know? Yeah. I, I can see it from both sides. It's like there could be a privileged part of that where our, uh, the help will clean it up for us, you know, that kind of thing. And it also can be, I am doing the best job I can with all these kids. I can only I, do so yeah. much. I think but it's later. I think it's later. Yeah. The funniest part about that is this guy's a multi-million dollar baseball player. Why is she flying coach? Why? <laughs> What's going on there? And where is he? I mean, is he so, playing? You know, it's I just. Think, I think they're going to the city he was in. I, it's, I gotcha. it's a fair. It's a fair point. I mean. Maybe put her in it's, for it's, class. It's, I don't it's know. It's not easy to to travel with kids, and I think it's even not, Troy. Not, I tell you right now, it's not at all. And that, that'll bring us to the next one. Um, right. This one, this one maybe fired me up even more because I've had a kid. I've had multiple kids crying on like entire 
flights almost. And no one said a word. And everyone, you know, people around you just like smile at you and, and tell you how good your kids are because they're just being nice. They're nice people. But right. I guess there was a guy who lost it in another viral video on an airplane uh, because there was a baby crying and he was just F-bombing everyone freaking out. Like I thought it was going to be one of those ones that lead to a fist fight. And babies cry on planes. Drop, you know, if you can't, if if you can spare more than $15 for some some earbuds, maybe yeah. 30 gets you a good pair. Like kids some crying on canceling. planes, the guy lost it. Well, the thing is, too, I think at one point in that whole video, the kid stops crying and this guy's still screaming yeah. at the top of his lungs. So he's more annoying than the original source of the annoyance. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're and, right. Uh, you know, it's it's tough to keep your kids quiet. And I think most people recognize that. And if you just, you know, if you turn around, and say, I'm sorry, guys, or I'm doing the best, you know, I can. I think that would kind of quiet that uh, as best as, as you could. But I, I tell you, it's it's not easy. And, and I think they made the point that this flight was going to Orlando. So a lot of kids usually go to Orlando. I know Troy's not happy about that on, on, on planes, but <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the thing is, is that, uh, it, it, you know, it's not like they're, they're traveling to Paris, you know, in, in an adult, you know, from New York to Paris or something like that. And it's an adult trip or whatever, but I, uh, I, I feel for the, the parents, um, of that child because obviously, and you can attest to this. Yeah. We're mortified more than anybody else that our kid is is you know annoying other people. I think that's why everyone's been nice to me. It's happened to me many times, like almost every vacation. And I think everyone's nice to me because they see that just look of panic in my face that this of is course. happening and inconveniencing everyone. And everyone's always very nice. I, I thought it was funny that Jim. I didn't expect Jim to like be with both of the be on like the right side from like a parent's perspective and like i you know i don't even think the old jimmy where kids are annoying but he he was he was more for the 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 mother in the first one and, and he was really angry at the guy who was uh yelling at the, about the yeah day. you know it's another step towards uh, domesticated jimmy i think but <laughs> and you know jim brought up another point that that he i don't think a lot of people do realize that this guy could be a smoker and is just jones in for a cigarette yeah. and it's been a delay and they had a taxi or whatever was going on. And this guy had in his mind that he could get his cigarette in, uh, in, and he's not doing it. And that could lead to, you know, some, some outrage, I guess. I, I was never a smoker, but, Same. you know, I can, I've been hungry a lot. And that usually, you know, Might leads do it. to that. Right, That's right. There's always, I mean, there's always, or just they had a huge fight or something happened before the flight. Because it was just 45 minutes. He said just 45 minutes. That's nothing. Yeah, my kids have cried for two hours straight on a plane. So, um, yeah, I, I I think there had to be something else going on. So, you know, interesting to hear them break that down. So, we did have some interesting guests this week. We had uh, Mike Vecchione. Always seems like he's a really well respected comic in uh, in New York, and obviously he's a national headliner. Has done some TV, but uh, always gets a lot of respect from Jim. I'll say when when he goes in. Pat Tim from Fox News told some very uh, honest tales about a pr procedure she had where she had to have. Yeah. A bag with her at home and uh that guy put to good use uh phil selman i'm gonna break down a little more he, he's been on a few times in the last couple of years and i think this was his best appearance we're just getting more and more of him super interesting kind of old school new york comic guy uh very peculiar so uh so yeah so who did you think was the best so you know it's interesting to me and um this gets to, to the point where i'm maybe not as uh up on current uh people but i didn't know any of these people before quite honestly really uh I, yeah i i wasn't familiar with any of them and um that's good and bad i like to get to know people and i like to see what they're about and yeah. see their appearances um and uh and for me um i liked i liked each one and what they brought but the what interest me was was cat and the things that she was talking about and having her procedure and then Having, you know, was it a colostomy bag, I, I believe, that she would have to have with her during uh, intimate moments. And that just seems like, I don't know how that could happen. So she was very interesting. So for me, she was my 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 favorite guest. Um, I uh, I did like the stories that Phil was was telling and, and, and Troy, or, or excuse me, Mike's uh, trip with him. But um, it just, it went a little long for me, quite honestly. I, for me, I couldn't get enough Phil Selman. Yeah. I, I am buying Phil Selman stock right now because I think it's about to go to the moon. Uh, I just, he's so, he's so unique. Um, I'll give you that he's, for sure. He's, he's very funny. 
It's, How many bagels do you think he had, though? Just just ask, answer well, the question. Did he yeah, they, they put the under, over under at five, I think. Four or five. Over yeah. under four, four and a half, maybe the over under. Yeah. I I think he could have had five. I wrote down. So that basically we hear about, you know, we hear about how he's trying to, to he's basically trying to to get Adam Sandler to put him in something. He always is trying to like meet Adam Sandler somehow. It's hilarious. Um, he frequents massage parlors that may do a little extra. He, he, and he's kind of has a, a real kind of tradition with it, a ritual, if you will. And this time, Mike Montone did a great bit, kind of like getting to know Phil, like where he hangs, where he's from, like actually being around there. Um, and it was great. And and in the middle of that, we heard him place some bagel orders. And then he told Jim and Sam that he went to Five Guys and he had this order at Five Guys. I mean, there's I don't know if there's one by you, Chris. In, in Illinois, the closest one to me, I think, is Orland Park by my in-laws. And, yeah, there's one. There's one real like close. It. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, so so this is it's a it's a basic burger place, pretty big portions. So at Five Guys, he had four hot dogs, two cheeseburgers, a bacon, lettuce, and tomato, grilled cheese, large fry, and I even know they had this a bacon shake. And he yeah. said he only eats once a day, and I think I can see why. Like that's more than most people would eat. And he's, he's not a large man. You know, he's, yeah, he's I don't think he is. Huge. Yeah, and then I don't, I didn't hear any fries in that, but I think Five Guys is where they kind of scoop the fries. One large and they, fry, one large fry. The, if I didn't say it. So they scoop the they scoop the fries yeah. and then they pour the rest of them in the bag. You know, it's just like they <laughs> fill the thing and then the whole bag is 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 French fries. Yeah, I mean, I'm a guy that really I think my vice. I mean, we talk about the guys' vices on uh, on the show, and we know what Jim and Troy's are, and we know Sam has some for wrestling and shoes, and Travis with Disney. I love food, man. I love yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not cakes. It's I mean, I love cake and and donuts and stuff. But I would, if I could eat like Phil does, I would. Man, that 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 sounds terrific well, to me. And all, all that food sounded really good. That's all stuff I would order um, in probably smaller portions at at, at different times. So <laughs> let me let me backtrack a little bit. I didn't say yeah. I was digging Phil, but obviously I, I listened to everything. I will I will back you up on this. He is extremely unique right he is oh, different than most yes. and he uh and his stories yeah i, I I'll, I'll i'll give you a little bit more on that 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 phil had some interesting stories and they said today that he, he even uh, reached out to jim and said thank you for having me on i yes, really well, just yeah. so it meant it meant a lot to him yeah i like that and w when you were just talking about him, i just remembered maybe the most interesting thing was went to bu uh it was studying drama Punched his trauma teacher in the face because the guy grabbed his ass. Yeah, he said that uh, the guy acted yeah, inappropriately, story. and he punched him in the face, and he left. He, he there's a lot out. of there's a lot of weird stories. With, yeah, uh, yeah, with yeah. So that was uh, it was a fine segment with Phil Phil Selman, both uh, the interview and and the um, the kind of man on the street feature that that Mike did. It was, it was yeah, I'd like to see Mike do some more of those kind of you know with one of our favorite guests get out there and and and, and follow them around i think that'd be cool he, it was it was really refreshing i thought that whole bit because it's nice to see mike doing that kind of stuff again i i'm guessing he's he's probably doing more behind the scenes but um i, I miss those i miss when they were coming in all the time where you have mike doing something where he's man on the street interviewing people or just on location somewhere he's so good at that Right. I'm not trying to stir exactly. up anything here either, but I don't think we hear as much from Mike as we used to during the show. Uh, I think they'll right. ask him questions right. every once in a while yeah. and stuff, but he used to chime in a lot more. And I'm a big Mike fan, and I, I hope Me it wasn't too. like, hey, someone telling him to do not to do that, or he was just got more busy doing other things. I, I think yeah, I think his gig could have changed a little behind the scenes. You still do, do hear him a little bit on air, and it's great to see this, and it went really well, so hopefully we see uh, see more of it. That's, that's what I think he's the best at. So here, let's get to... Uh, Line of the week, then I, I have, you know, what? I'm going to go first. I have, yeah, a, please. I have a definite one. Um, maybe you remember how they got to this, but they were talking about, they were talking about, uh, goop and Jim just, just in a split second, shot out first time I ever ate a candle talking about a certain <laughs> candle that, 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 that is made. Yeah. That is certain made smell. Out of the mold. Yeah. yeah so that, that, that I was, completely that how fast good. that was and how hilarious that was. Yeah, mine mine also is a fast one, and and the and to our listeners and viewers, we don't discuss our line of the week. So yeah. I would imagine that one of these days we're going to pick the same one. I'm surprised we haven't yet. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I struggled with this one a little bit more. Um. I, I I didn't have one where I just really cracked up, but this made me giggle today. 
if giggle is manly enough, but <laughs> the guys were talking about uh, Jim's Cleveland road trip, right? And yeah. Sam said, uh, hey, bring me back some sheets, pop, will you? <laughs> and Jim goes, I'm not that old. And Sam goes, there was no comma. So he wanted some sheets, pop. He didn't want to bring me back some sheets, pop. So <laughs> that made me that made me giggle. And, and it's just it's Jim's quickness. That's what, you know, the line of the week is usually this little quip that comes out, you know, and it's uh, it's yeah. good stuff. And they always talk about how Atel, Jim and other comics always talk about how Atel, you don't know what the punchline is going to be. Even with these really quick things, it's not even like Jim's like setting up a joke. It just comes right out. And like, if you can go back and, and try to come up with a joke in those moments, like you're not going to get the punchline he has. So it's, and it's There's a couple of swings and misses too, that I actually enjoy as well. Like you're like, oh, oh yeah. that didn't work. And those are, those are, those, those are, are also great. funny because they'll jump yeah. on himself. So exactly. there's some other good show banter this week. Let's get to some of it here before uh, we put a bow on this one. You know, the <laughs> Thursday, Jim was being silly, but ended up proving a point when he tweeted a uh, a picture of his foot, and it got more likes than a serious XM post in five minutes. Yeah, this this cracked me up as well as still angers me. You know, being in kind of the television production business firing up some cameras and letting them roll. I'm sure there's somebody on their staff that would cut it, but they won't even fire up the in-studio cameras for these guys, which it's is a lot of great stuff. A lot of, yeah, good it's content. infuriating and it's not that hard. And there's could be a lot of just give it, just turn them on and give us the clips and we'll put it together, you know, yeah, but sure. they won't even do that. So that's frustrating. So, and part of that, they're looking at Sirius XM's uh, posts on their social media and one post, I can't remember who it was, got 900 and, 27 um likes or and and then jim said yeah you know a shot of my foot would do better and they said do it and within five minutes he <laughs> asked that amount of likes for a stupid foot tweedle leedle leedle d right i i hope they keep doing stuff like that and the, you can tell the video thing is driving them nuts because they yeah. want they want the content out there and and they know they're creating some great moments so yeah i i definitely feel yeah it bothers me I do want to bring up one of my favorite ongoing hit, right? Yes. This is something that happens all the time and it cracks me up and it makes me cringe as well. <laughs> Jim makes Sam look like a racist or an anti-Semite in front of guests all the time, even though we know Sam is nowhere near any of those things. But he's like, yeah, well, that's what Sam was saying earlier was, you know, and he'll, he'll reference something like that. I did it in front of... Um, who was it? A uh, football player was it Emmett Smith, I think. Emmett Smith. Yep, yep. And uh, and 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 Sam just cringes, and and it cracks me up because, you know, it's it's far from the truth. But the guys, the guests, don't know that. They could think that they don't know who Sam is sometimes, you know. And just yep. it just cracks me up. So that ongoing hit. I agree with you. That's a great one. Steve Gutenberg's another one. That, That's that, right. There's there's I think the list goes on and on. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it happens all the time. And they're gonna. No one has like questioned it. They, they either laugh or they just like act like they didn't hear it. Yeah. One of these days, you're gonna get someone who's like in a bad mood or really wants to make a statement and be like, "Oh yeah, is that right?" Like Sam's. Yes. Yeah. He created a really awkward moment in the future. Yes, he does. It's a little dangerous walk. Yeah. It is. Uh, some other great stuff that I loved is uh, we heard that Voss Sam recalled a story from when Sam went out there. Voss has a hard time uh, for merch sales if someone says, "Can I pay you through Venmo?" Because he can't remember his Venmo email address or how to do it or whatever right. and that just that made me laugh so the password's probably what is it comic uh 614 or whatever yes whatever <laughs> he said on air that one time absolutely password to everything and yeah and then of course you know i love jan terry and with tax day we got to hear about the i aw not r i aw rest <laughs> because Thank ours you. are difficult in those songs and yeah, uh, yeah we let off uh tax day with that uh with that golden nugget Oh yeah, they got some good. They always get some good use out of Jan Terry. Um, you know, I I love the way that they've embraced her, and I was cracking up when I started Tax Day with her IRS song. Yep. And then one other thing that I really enjoyed this yeah. week is uh, they were talking about dice and uh, and Jim working with dice and gamblers. It kind of led to the dice thing that you know Jim knew a lot of some of the high rollers and had an opportunity to go in the high roller room when dice was there. And there's yep. one particular high roller that absolutely loved dice and. So much so that he added himself to a marquee for Dice and, and Jimmy's uh, appearance. And it was, you know, Andrew Dice Clay, you know, open, you know, opening Jim Norton and this guy. Yeah, that was funny. That's a funny story. 
And I just, I did, if you got the money and you have the connections, he made it happen, which I, I really enjoyed. The other last thing I want to say is uh, something I enjoyed is when Jim, an engineer, went in to help and Jim passed gas near him. <laughs> Troy was upset because it's the only engineer that likes Troy. Yeah. Jim, uh, Troy recommended that Jim apologize to him. Which yeah. Like, I mean, they need help a lot and they never get yeah. help. Right. And uh doesn't seem like uh, Mars really wants to contribute. I don't even know if Mars is still there, but Mars is a big player back in the OA days, right? As an engineer that would, would help them out and and I just I need to know more too about the DJ setup. Is it still in the studio? Is it being used? What's going on with this DJ yeah. setup, you know? No, I, I agree one hundred percent. And look, thank you everybody for listening and watching. We appreciate it. Always great to break down some Jim and Sam with you. Yeah, you know, it's a fun it's a fun time. I love recapping these things. It makes me enjoy the show that I just listened to all week over and over again. So it was great. And you know what? We'll see you in the town square next time. Thanks for watching and listening to the Jim and Sam Town Square. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell, not Doug Bell, so you don't miss an episode. And if you're listening to just the podcast, please leave us a five-star review. We really appreciate it.